continuation of the derivative intro. Goal is to get this function from this one. And really to take the formula for this function, which was way up here, x cubed minus 2x squared plus 1, and get a formula for this one. So that once we have that formula, we could just plug in. Couldn't we get the whole function all at once easily? Well, we actually have done a lot of this. Um, if you're watching this and you're not in my class, you probably haven't done this because I tend to do this experimentally with the calculator with, with the students. But we actually have done this for a lot of functions. We know the magic shortcut formulas for a lot of building blocks. And I didn't want to jump ahead too far, so we didn't start putting the building blocks together. But that is something that we can actually easily do. So the key fact uh, is really, let me put this in a bullet. What are our key facts? The sum, sorry, the derivative of a sum is the sum of the derivatives, just like the limit loss. The derivative of a difference is the difference of the derivatives. If I multiply it by a constant, if a function is multiplied by a constant, and it's really important that that has to be a constant. If you multiply two variable functions together, it's more complicated, and we're going to have to work on that in a little bit. But if a function is multiplied by a constant, that constant just comes out, or comes through the calculation. And we'll see an example of that in just a second. Okay. So that, those are very, very, very useful facts combined with these building blocks. Here's how that works to calculate the derivative we, we, that we want. Actually, let's see, I think I had it already set up, yeah. So how would we do that, use that to get the derivative of this guy? Well, let's see. The derivative of x cubed we already knew was 3x squared. So we're just going to take the derivative of that guy separately. We're going to take the derivative of x squared, which was 2x. I'm just going to put it over here. And I'm going to take the derivative of a constant, which is 0. How are these going to be combined? Well, what does this rule say? It says, here, I'm taking x squared and I'm multiplying that by a constant. And so I'm just going to take that 2x, and I'm just going to multiply it by that same constant. Actually, just, let's just think of it as a 2, and I'm going to use the minus in a minute. And now, this is the difference of these two functions, and so I'm just going to take the difference of the derivatives. And then this is this whole function plus this constant, and so I'm just going to add in 0, which really doesn't do much. So I'm just taking the derivative of each piece separately, and when I took the derivative of the minus 2x squared, the minus 2 just came out, and the constant died. So my claim is that that function, 3x squared minus 4x, is the derivative. Well, let's look at it. Let's go ahead and graph that. It's a parabola facing upward. It's not on the same scale as we were graphing it before, but notice where the intercepts are, 0 and between 1 and a, one and 1 half. It goes just a little bit below the axis. Does that look like if we zoomed in it would be this? You betcha, because that's actually I cheated. I actually graphed 3x squared minus 4x to graph this. This is exactly the correct derivative of this function. So that's an example of how we're going to finally take, if you're wondering, where are we going to use those? Where are we going to actually use these cool shortcuts? Now we're going to be able to use them big time. I think I'll record a separate video to maybe justify a little bit more these rules. Um, I don't think it's very useful to, to prove those in general um, at this level, but maybe I'll, I'll work through this example really carefully. But let's just do another example real quick. What if we had um, f of x was equal to, I don't know, something funky, x squared plus 5e e to the x minus cosine x then what's the derivative of that going to be? Well, again, anytime you see a sum or difference, it's just going to come through. And that constant, because it's a constant, is just going to pop out. So the derivative of x squared, if we look back at our table, it's right up here. It's 2x plus 5 times whatever the derivative of e to the x is. Ooh, that e to the x was the super cool one. e to the derivative was exactly itself. Hard to overemphasize how important and cool that is. And then minus the derivative of cosine. Now that's a little tricky. Derivative of cosine turned out to be minus sine when we looked at it carefully. And so that those minuses are going to cancel. And so we're going to get 2x 
plus 5e to the x plus sine x. Let's check it. Let's see if this does a good... Oh, this might not be a very good scale if I do the auto scale on this. There's the function. Okay. And here's its derivative. Oh, now they're backwards, aren't they? Well, let's see. Yeah, it's kind of hard to get them on the get them on the same picture because they're so big. But let's uh, let's just make them smaller. Two by two, and let's say two by two. I wasn't planning on doing this in the start, so it's taking a little while. Sorry. Okay. And let me uh, let me switch them so that this one's on the bottom. There we go. Okay. So the claim is the bottom one is the derivative of the top one. Well. Let's see, this is some small negative values and then coming minim, minim, minning out. Aha, these guys, these values are small, going through zero and then getting really, really big. Just like these slopes are really small negative, bottoming out right about here, right where this crosses, and then getting really, really big. So it's not the world's best example, but it does confirm that it's plausible that this function really was a derivative of this guy. So suddenly we've got a great method of... Um, of taking these derivatives. Let me tie it back to one thing that we had before though. Remember that very often what we're interested in is taking this function and evaluating it at a specific point. Let me do that with this example. Let's say what if I wanted the slope of just one tangent line at x equals 0 to this function right here. Well, I just do this procedure to get the slope of the tangent line at every possible point, and then I throw away most of that information. It's just going to be f prime of 0. Let me go ahead and copy this down. Oops. I don't want to really delete it there. Okay, so f prime of x is equal to this guy. So f prime of 0 is just going to be 2 times 0 plus 5e e to the 0 plus sine of 0. And I picked a nice simple value. So I just get 5. And so this graph, the original graph at 0, has supposedly has a slope of 5. It's kind of hard to see on this scale. But it actually is going to be correct that it has a slope of 5. So for example, if I increase x by dx equals 0.1 from x equals 0, then y will increase by roughly, not exactly, dy equals 5 dx equals 5 times 0 0.1 equals 0 0.5. That's the kind of calculation it really always comes down to. It's just now we've got this wonderful way of doing the calculation, which is more powerful and easier.